What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another market update at subscriber requests. I've gone back through and found some recent sales for the Power of the Force 2 line from the mid-1990s all the way until about 2000. Uh, these figures are highly collected, and there are a lot of variations. There are a lot of errors. I found some graded and ungraded. Uh, we're going to start off with the Rancor Monster. We all know about the failed HasLab Black Series project, and I feel like some of the recent sales prices for the Power of the Force 2 Rancor playset is uh, is indicative of the fact that there's some pent-up demand now that that HasLab project failed. And uh, so it, the, the prices were kind of in, in a pretty narrow band, but I'd say anywhere from about 130 bucks to about 175 is where this Power of the Force 2 Rancor and Luke Skywalker sold. You can see there he's got the bone in his hand, getting ready to put it in the Rancor's mouth, just like in the movie. It's even got a check out the real feel skin. So <laughs> it's kind of an interesting, an interesting thing there. What I, what I also think is kind of funny is that you can almost argue that the paint scheme on this Power of the Force 2 item from like, you know, whatever it is, 20, 25 years ago, is better than what they were showing for the HasLab prototype of the Black Series Rancor. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but this thing does present really nicely. I love the way it looks inside the box. And so that gives you a rough idea. If you guys are wanting a display three and three quarter inch scale Rancor, you don't want to pay vintage Kenner prices. You want something a little more detailed. Uh, this is this is a nice option. So uh, that one again sold for one forty two fifty. There's also obviously a black series version that is in the three and three quarter inch scale. That one's going to be a little bit more pricey, but this is a nice budget option for those of you who are looking. Before I dig in any further, I just want to say thanks again to my Patreon supporters and to all my existing subscribers. If you're new to the channel, I try to mix it up. I cover everything from things like this, Power of the Force 2, that are subscriber requests, to Vintage Kenner, and to the Vintage Collection. And so let's dig into a few other items. There were some really cool items that have sold here. And uh, another one is this one. This is the Bantha and the Tuscan Raider. I think that the popularity of this one has really shot up, obviously, because of the Book of Boba Fett and some of those flashback scenes where we see the quote-unquote origin of Boba Fett's kind of return to glory on Tatooine. But I used to have this one myself loose and kind of it was a great display piece. The hair was a little excessive on it, but, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty, it was a pretty cool item. I, I, I liked having that. I just I just kind of ran out of space and I, I kind of I think I either gave it to my son or local kid in the neighborhood but very cool uh mint and sealed box this is not that far out from from where a nice clean mint and sealed box will sell for anywhere from 100 to about 150 is, is where I see these sell for regularly now and that's obviously a big jump up from even you know let's call it six months ago and the, the main reason is because we see so much of these bon banthas and the Tuscan Raiders writing on them uh, it, they just played a, a pretty integral role in that season of the book of boba fett another really cool one i love this one this is the b-wing fighter with the celestin kind of knee and numb look-alike and uh this b-wing is is great it, it uses almost the exact same mold if not the exact same mold as the vintage kenner version of the b-wing it's just got some updated paint schemes things like that obviously the packaging is quite a bit different and quite a bit better since you can see the ship inside that awesome window there uh, 109.95 is where this one sells for i've seen a few examples of of that figure in prototype format that have been for sale in some of the groups and we're going to talk more about prototypes in a little bit here uh, another one obviously that's really picked up steam is the boba fett slave one uh, you've got the vintage collection version well two of them actually you got the amazon exclusive from about 2010 i believe and then you had the more recent re-release of the Vintage Collection Slave 1. Uh, you had this Power of the Force 2 version. You also had a Shadows of the Empire packaging version. And then, of course, the Vintage Kenner. And uh, this one was a pretty good deal, $89.95 for the Mint and Seal Box Slave 1. That's about right. Uh, that's about where they go for. Uh, this one was not sealed, Mint and Seal Box, even though it was labeled as that. It, it, was, it was opened, as you can see there at the top. But still, $99.00. Or excuse me, eighty nine ninety nine is is not bad. That's a pretty fair price for it. Uh, mint and seal box, they go for a little bit more. Uh, an item that we've talked about in the past are these red card hollow foil stickers. There are not many of these out there. Uh, I know that Princess Leia, the Stormtrooper, 
R2D2, and I th don't quote me on this, but I think it was Ben Kenobi are the four that are most common for the red card with the hollow foil sticker. There are clearly other examples of that though, and uh, they're very, very rare, very expensive. And uh, this one is a uh, one of the more common ones. Those four are, are ones that you can find fairly regularly, but are still expensive, obviously, since this one sold for $130 plus shipping. But uh, occasionally you'll see some other characters, I believe like Greedo and a few others that uh, some of the experts in the Power of the Force 2 collecting groups have shown off. But uh, Leia is one of the more common ones, but it's still uh, clearly it's gone up in terms of desirability since that price point was a little bit higher than I expected. Now we're going to dig into a couple of graded items, and wow, th these prices were just shocking, especially this one. This was an AFA-90 Boba Fett, and obviously there are so many different Boba Fett versions, but the no circle on left hand, or no circle on one of the hands, and a full circle on the other hand, is, is one of the more desirable ones. And you can see that there, right here. Uh, this one has no, no circle there, and then a full circle. There's obviously half circle variations, so you can see that full circle. That's the most common in terms of the paint schemes, but the no circle is is typically the most desirable in terms of those different errors. And this price was shocking, $1,800. And admittedly, it was a 90 grade. It was a 90 grade, straight 90s for the sub scores, but $1,800, I mean, good Lord, that is a really, really high price. Here was another 90 grade. This one had the no shoulder emblem. So, you know, some of these Boba Fett's were produced without the little shoulder emblem. That's It was either a sticker or a paint scheme. I can't remember. But this one was a 90 grade for that one. That one sold for $485 at auction. 28 bids. That one closed in February. Some of these data points are a little bit older. I just wanted to pull them up. This was another one that Matthew the Turtle is the seller on this one. Matthew has the most incredible collection of Power of the Force 2 items you've ever seen in your life. I mean, he's got everything. This one is that same figure with the no, no circle on one of the hands, and uh, it says leg stamps. Let's see what he says there. Not only is Fett missing the circle on his left hand, but he also has a combination of one stamped and one unstamped foot. The COO slash date info was initially stamped on the backs of, foot of Boba Fett's legs, but that was eventually changed, and they started stamping that info on the bottom of his feet. In this case... The bottom of Boba Fett's right foot is stamped Kenner slash China, but there's no stamp on the bottom of his left foot, which is where I assume the date stamp would be. So anyway, uh, basically a double error, and that one sold at auction for $217.50. And this is a good angle here, so you can see that Kenner China, usually the date is on that bottom of that foot there, unless it's a prototype. You know, I've got some prototypes at grading right now, that do not have any stamps, I believe. They might they might have had, one of them has stamps, one of them doesn't, I, I can't remember. My memory's terrible these days. But anyway, that, that was a really cool error. And I mean, you know, given that it doesn't have the, uh, you know, the circle on his hand, and we saw this AFA 90 example that was on the red card. It's not a different card, earlier card. So it's maybe a little bit more desirable. And this one was clearly higher grade being a 90, but still 217, or excuse me, yeah, $217 versus $1,800. That's a big delta. That's a big change. <laughs> Here's another cool one that he had. Uh, this was a green card missing the cape and the Wookiee braids. So that's a cool one. That was a really cool one. I didn't see that one go up for sale. That was really cool. That sold for $150 on 22 bids. I would have bid on that one if I had seen it. I just didn't see it. So uh, it kind of reminds me of the vintage collection version, the VC-186 question mark of Boba Fett, where he's missing the Wookiee braids. We all know how expensive that one has gotten. But that was a really cool power of the Force 2 error Boba Fett. A few autographs, as I've talked about in past videos, autographs are great for the Power of the Force 2 line because they're not particularly expensive. Some of them, most of them, are not particularly expensive, so they make great items to take to conventions and get autographed. Um, and this one was a tri-logo or tri you know, trilingual card back found in Europe. That was signed by Jeremy Bullock. That one sold for 93 bucks. That's a good deal. Good deal there. This same seller had a number of them. This one was numbered one of 500. And that one was, again, autographed by Jeremy Bullock. That was the same price. That was a steal of a deal. And this one was triple signed and was an absolute bargain, whoever got this one. This one was signed by Jeremy Bullock, Dickie Beer, the stunt double, and then John Morton, who played the Bespin version of Boba Fett in The Empire Strikes Back. So you had two of the actors plus the stunt double all on the same card autographed. 
And it looked like it also had Daniel Logan, who played a young Boba Fett in the prequel trilogy. So it had four, excuse me, it had four different autographs. And it sold for $112.50. Are you kidding me? That was an absolute deal, whoever got that one. This one just sold. This one just sold. This was the impetus for me to finally get out a Power of the Force 2 market update was this one. It sold yesterday at auction. It was a miss card of Lando Calrissian on a tri-logo, trilingual card. It was AFA 75, which I thought was very generous given the heavy creasing on the front of the card. You can see that crease goes all the way across from the uh, hanger tab all the way to the left edge and then all the way to the right edge. And they still gave it a 75 subscore. So that was a very generous score, whoever sent that one in to get graded. But awesome factory miss card of Lando on a Boba Fett card back. Probably worth bidding on if I had felt like buying, but I didn't. Uh, that one sold for $305. I thought that was a great deal for a Power of the Force 2 miss card. And I think it was for sale for a long time. It just hadn't sold, but they finally put it at auction and 305 bucks is a great deal. Great deal for that one. This was another really cool one. This was a mock-up prototype of the Hoth Imperial Stormtrooper on a Han Solo in Carbonite card back, the trilingual version that was over in Europe. Now, it was an unpainted prototype. And what, what's a mock-up, you ask? Well, a mock-up is where the, the Hasbro and slash Kenner employees and engineers are trying to see what the figure is going to look like at retail. And so they'll oftentimes take a blister, take the correct tray, and put in one of these unpainted prototype figures, and then they'll have the factory stamp it on a different card back just to kind of test it out to see how it'll look. So very, very rare. There's probably only a handful, if not less than a handful, of these available for sale. And the price reflected that. It was at auction. $965 was the final sales price on 30 bids. That just closed on March 6th. What an awesome item, an unpainted prototype mock-up sample, factory sample. So very, very cool. Prototype Power of the Force 2 items continue to command big, big prices. And uh, like I said, I've got a number, I've got a, a test shot. I've got a couple of test shots as well as a quality control sample at Collector Archive that I hope to have back sometime uh, towards the end of the year. This was another really nice one, an unpainted prototype yak face. Now, you know, it's listed as a test shot. It did not include any additional photos of the feet. So my only concern would be that this was a fake or like some kind of, you know, uh, 3D printed garbage. But this this looks legit to me. I'm not trying to accuse the seller of anything. I just wish that they had showed the feet of this one. But it looks like a nice Power of the Force 2 yak face test shot, unpainted prototype. And uh, that sold for $300. That's a good deal. If that's legit, that's a, that was a great deal because Yak Face prototypes, Power of the Force to, uh, you know, Yak Face. There, there, there's a lot of collectors. I know I can think of a guy named Mike who's got a really big Power of the Force, or excuse me, not a, he's got a very big Yak Face prototype, modern prototype collection. And uh, I hope that he was the one that found this because he's, he's always in demand for always asking people, hey, if you got any of these Yak Face prototypes please send them my way so i hope that he was able to pick that one up uh here's a, this is what i was referring to with these kind of samples this is a quality control white tag hasbro far east signed sample this is the expanded universe kind of luke skywalker from the dark empire comic series it's kind of like the dark version of luke skywalker most of these are usually beat up really really beat up because they're handled internally by these engineers they're they're doing samples to kind of test out the machinery and making sure that the quality control is good. So this has got this the sample uh, Hasbro Far East signed sample on the back, and it's got the engineer, the QA engineer. I, I assume his name is Brian, but he's on a number. He's he's always the guy that signs off on a number of these quality control samples. And uh, so th there's a couple of different tags. There's like the green tag, like I've got it on a few of mine, and then this Hasbro Far East has a white tag which you know took place obviously after hasbro purchased kenner so anyway that one sold for 275 dollars big number big number most of these can sell for 100 to 150 usually but i think you got a couple of things going for it is that this is a different tag it's not this normal green tag which i me i personally prefer the green tags than the hasbro far east tags but i think part of it too is that it's luke it's luke skywalker so you're going to pay a little bit more for that one typically depending on the character you're going to pay a little bit more but for like standard characters like my Neon Num, for example, I paid like a equivalent of like 100 or 150 bucks for it. 
Uh, okay, this is another really cool one. This is one I've got graded by AFA. I think I've got an 85 plus. This is the Retooled Shadows um, Darth Vader. And what is that? Well, there was a, a, a Darth Vader Shadows of the Empire 2 pack that uh, Darth Vader was packed with Prince Zizor. And uh, he's got that flared cape. So that's how you know that this is that example. A number of them at JCPenney were repackaged for these green cards. And uh, so J.C. Penney was the was kind of the known retailer to have these, uh, and they were repacked for for the to, for that department store. So you can always tell it's the the, the retooled Shadows of Vader because it's got this little flare down here on the cape. So uh, really nice example. That one sold for ninety nine ninety nine plus shipping. Uh, as a reference point for my AFA eighty five example that I bought a, a while ago now, uh, probably about six months ago. I think I paid somewhere in the ballpark of 175 bucks. Might have been 168, somewhere in there. That 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 number seems to ring a bell for me. So, I think um, given that this one sold, it was ungraded and probably in the same shape, if not worse shape. Yeah, you can see it's got some card wave to it. So, probably not as good a shape as mine. And that one still sold for 110 dollars uh, after shipping. So. I feel like I got a pretty good deal now, all things considered, with what prices have done for some of these. Uh, here's another interesting one that Matthew the Turtle had, and this one was kind of a weird uh, Obi Wan Kenobi long saber, but this is kind of the standard color to his blue saber, this blue color here. This one is the error, and it's kind of like almost like a greenish blue. I don't know if that's degradation or if it's just at the time that this was manufactured, they kind of had like a weird a weird batch of plastics that they used. Who knows? But apparently it was desirable enough because somebody bid on a lot of people bid on it. It sold for $175 on eight bids. And this is for a very rare pictured Obi-Wan era with a green long lightsaber. Uh, it's very different color compared to the normal blue saber. Excellent overall condition. Very hard to find air. And so that, that gives you an idea of what people are willing to pay for some of these odd airs that are out there. So uh, that, that's the great thing about the Power of the Force 2 line. It's almost infinite collectability between all the different regional card backs. You had Italian cards, European cards, Canadian cards, Mexican and South American cards, in addition to the standard U.S. cards. And then you had packaging errors. You had figure errors. You have prototypes. So the Power of the Force 2 line is becoming more and more collected. I know that a lot of the figures look like they've had bovine steroids for about half their life, but uh, it's a really cool line that... Uh, continues to kind of impress me with some of the cool stuff that's out there. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Power of the Force 2 line and some recent sales prices. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.